As a graduate student, I'm sure you have a resume or CV, but there's another important professional tool you need. Even if you're a first or second year student, you should have an effective academic bio. This mini lesson will help you get started. I'm Cheryl Holt and I teach academic writing and presentations to international students at the University of Minnesota. A well-written bio is an essential tool to have in your professional toolkit. Your bio is a great way to share who you are and highlight your accomplishments. It's typically used when someone needs to introduce you at a conference, seminar, or presentation. It can also be a great addition to your LinkedIn profile or your personal professional website. Or it may also appear at the bottom of articles you publish or a professional journal. Or it could be used to introduce you to a potential employer or client or a potential funding organization. Having a well-written bio is an important part of being a professional or student. So let's start with what you could include. Graduate students, particularly international graduate students, might think, I'm just a graduate student. I haven't done anything yet. But that's probably not true. You might not be an expert in your field yet, but you have a lot to say already. Before you begin to write your bio, list your credentials. You probably already have each of these areas listed on your resume or CV, so listing these items will probably be relatively easy. You're not likely to describe everything on this list, but it's a start as you begin to compose your bio. What you choose to include will depend on where this bio will appear and who your primary readers are and the purpose of this bio. Will it be on your social networking site, in a publication, on your personal page, or as a part of a grant application? Based on this information, you can determine the reader's interests and the amount of technical detail to include. You can modify the type of information for the different types of bios, but always highlight the accomplishments and details that are most relevant to that particular audience. Now that you've listed your credentials and thought about what the reader needs, let's look at some overall guidelines for all bios. Start with the full name, first name, and then last name. Don't reverse this order. In a few bios, we use I, but it's relatively rare, so we're going to start with the full name. Then decide how to refer to yourself throughout the bio. Certainly, you'll use personal pronouns, he or she, his or her, but you can also repeat your first name or use a title plus your last name. Of course, if you're a woman, use Ms. Ms. instead of Miss or Mrs. One last detail about names. If you've adopted a shorter name or westernized name, Here's how you can write it at the beginning and then later refer to yourself by that name. It's also important to include keywords from your field. Your choice of how much technical detail and which keywords are included depends on who the readers are and where it'll appear. Another feature of effective bios is being specific, using numbers for example. I'll say more about this later. Remember also that you're promoting your skills, so there should be somewhat of a persuasive tone, using a few persuasive adjectives like key projects or possibly the significance of your research. There's a subtle difference and a balance between being overly proud or implying I am the best there is and being too neutral so you show no confidence. But you probably know that people in the U.S. tend to self-promote and your bio is certainly a great way to promote yourself. Okay, it's time to start constructing your bio. Start with your first and last name. In a very few cases you could use I, but almost all consultants recommend your first and then last name to begin. 
then write your year and degree or whatever your situation is such as your current title and then add your department specialization or concentration if appropriate and the name of your university college or institution this first sentence establishes your current credibility Many bios then give the most important information. For graduate students, it's probably your research, teaching, or pedagogical interests. The rest of the bio depends on how long you want it to be and what details of your credentials you want to include for the particular audience you're targeting. Here are some of the details you might want to include in the middle of your bio depending on how detailed or how long you want it to be. Bios can be anywhere from 100 to 400 words, although most academic bios are around 150 to 250 words. Go back to your previous list of credentials. What do you want to include, and in what order do you want to present these credentials? Do some research in your field to see what areas to include or highlight. Find your advisor's bio or search academic bios in your field. What type of information do they include? After you have included the appropriate details, it's wise to end the bio with what type of job you're looking forward to. For a professional bio, remove sentences like this. Li Song Li grew up in Beijing, China and went to a top high school. Mostly I recommend avoiding talking about growing up in your home country unless it's highly relevant to your current situation. And certainly by now, your high school is not important. Concentrate on who you are now. Also, for an academic bio, remove hobbies or what you do in your spare time. As a graduate student, focus on your research and professional qualifications. Finally, the bio is not a resume or CV, so it's not so important to include dates or years. Let's look at a few more examples of how to highlight your credentials. Notice how specific this statement is. Her primary research interests focus on human dimensions of natural resource management with an emphasis on the social psychological visitor research in outdoor recreation and nature-based tourism settings. Specifically, her work focuses on diverse populations in their le leisure constraints. Notice how she's specific about her research. If she's working on a thesis or dissertation, she could even name the title of the paper. As a graduate student, Probably your most important accomplishment is your education. Work backwards with your education in the same way your resume works backwards. What other graduate degrees do you have? If it adds value, you can also mention your undergraduate degree. Here are some examples. Mohammed studied chemical engineering in both his bachelor's and master's degrees at the top university in Saudi Arabia. He has also taken courses in the field of biotechnology, which helped widen his insights about interdisciplinary research in this field. Do you notice in this example, he doesn't just list his degrees, he adds a story about what has helped him. Adding a story tone or information that helps us understand who you are is a good idea. It could include a short sentence, or it could be a component of your whole bio, as in this example. He writes, His interest in international development and providing food for developing countries began when he lived in Peru. He learned about the inequalities affecting indigenous communities and experienced the Peruvian culture firsthand. Inspired by his international experience, Ernesto interned with the Minneapolis Council on Global Affairs, conducting research on food security in Latin America. Do you notice how he has humanized his research and internship experience? 
I don't recommend a long story, but if there is something that humanizes your experience, it will help your readers connect with you. Here's another example where instead of just saying he has held leadership roles, he incorporates his information into his story. His bicultural background and focus on community collaboration led him to a number of opportunities to be involved in leadership roles, including, and then he lists the roles. Let's look at one more example of how to incorporate a story. This writer incorporates her story into her degrees and why she went on to higher education. She says, the experience with various health-related campaigns from the company stimulated her intellectual curiosity about effective health campaigns, so she returned to Ewell Women's University and received her master's degree in mass communication. Using words such as stimulated her intellectual curiosity about is much better than simply saying she decided to pursue her master's degree. Another principle for bios is to be specific. It will add to your credibility if you use specific words. For example, instead of saying Cheryl Holt is a student at the University of Minnesota, give the year, degree, and field. Instead of Cheryl worked for Samsung for three years, add details such as what projects, awards, and publications. She says, Cheryl's three years of experience working at Samsung on such such projects has given her solid experience in areas of, and then lists those areas. During that time, she was awarded something for her five articles published in top tier journals. Can you see how she expands on her experience instead of just stating the years and company name? Or instead of, she has been involved in, add details such as your role and number of projects. Don't ignore this point. It's important to be specific and detailed. This is such an important point. I want to give you a few more examples. You could include specific names of impressive organizations, as in this case, naming the United Nations and the South African government or name the national funder of a project, and even the name of your advisor or director if he or she is famous, or the purpose of the funding organization. Or it could be more subtle by using persuasive words like innovative. Remember, this is not just a resume or a CV in a sentence format. This should be specific and persuasive. To end the bio, if you're looking for a job in the future, and with what you want to do. It can be an aspiration, as in, Fatima looks forward to becoming an independent and successful female researcher and professor in this male-dominated field. Or, just naming your areas of interest, as in this example. Helen is looking forward to teaching and researching in the areas of graphic design, and so on. If you have a more immediate goal, you could state that goal as in, Carlos is applying for a research grant from, and plans to continue his research in. Okay, it's your turn to make your academic bio an effective tool for your next step in your career. As we've discussed, make every word count so it's detailed and specific, but take out unimportant information. Show it to someone in your field to give you feedback on if you've included the right type of information. Tell a story, but use a somewhat formal tone with no contractions and powerful words, for example. Finally, be sure there are no grammar or punctuation mistakes. Have someone else check it carefully so you look and sound professional. 
I encourage you to work on, on this now so it's ready when you need it.